Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 26, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. A political insider says it doesn't matter who you vote for. Hillary has this one in the bag. Then, mass sexual assaults at a Stockholm train station are reported to be more than just groping. And France declares a permanent police state. That's next. I started digressing off into this domestication process and how people are scared of things they shouldn't be because the media teaches them how uh, through through Pavlovian conditioning and peer pressure that it's it's fun to get scared of the Muslim terrorist, though the honeybee is much more deadly statistically. It's fun to get scared of the great white shark, even though they kill maybe three people a year worldwide. It's fun to get scared of things that don't matter. But then meanwhile, tornadoes just kill 300 people in one day. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new, groundbreaking, gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Alex Jones has been sending out a dire warning to anyone who would listen about this dangerous and unprecedented bill that's trying to make its way through Congress, trying to pass it under the cloak of Snowmageddon. Uh, this would be a blank check for whomever becomes the next president to declare war anywhere. No geographical boundaries to when, where, for how long they could declare war. And, you know, he's been catching a lot of flack. People say, oh, you're just fear mongering, you conspiracy theorist. This isn't like that at all. Well, now we have a Democratic senator taking to the Senate floor. This is Senator Chris Murphy. And he said that this resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the Constitution. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, a sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for almost any reason with absolutely no limitations. It's safe to say that this resolution is the wrong way to authorize war against ISIS. The language of this resolution is dangerous and it is unprecedented. The American people want Congress to authorize war against ISIS, but they also want us to make sure that we don't send hundreds of thousands of U.S. soldiers back into the Middle East to fight a war that has to be won first and foremost with regional partners. And they certainly don't want Congress to hand over the power to the president to send our troops into any country anywhere in the world for almost any reason. And that's what this resolution would do. And so, of course, this is the exact same thing that Ron Paul was saying last week, that this particular resolution would make the Iraq War Authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. Now, the Senator Murphy went on to say it gives the power to the president without consulting Congress to deploy U.S. forces in any one of the 61 countries where ISIS has a single sympathizer. And think about that. Uh, we are seeing what is happening to Europe and other countries where we're having these refugees, this migrant crisis, where all of these ISIS sympathizers are now being placed all over the globe. We have people coming across the southern border with fake Syrian passports. No one knows who they are, how to vet them. So this is a frightening thing to think whoever might be the next president, 
will have unprecedented power to declare war. This was the whole reason why the founders set up uh, the three branches of the government to make sure that we don't have a dictator in office who's going to send U.S. troops off to perpetual war. This is very frightening. And you have to understand with this international martial law, this is basically war against the world. And this is the, the perfect pattern, the perfect problem reaction solution. We're going to fund ISIS. We're going to drop them weapons. We're going to train them and ship them all around the world. And then we're going to declare international martial law to deal with that. We have the article from Kurt Nimmo today. France declares permanent police state. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls has declared a state of emergency which will last until the total and global war against the Islamic State is completed. Additionally, the French President Holland has told senior officials that the extension of the measure is possible. Ball said, we will have to live for decades or for many years with this menace or this threat, and that's why it's a war. And of course, all this came about after the November 13th attacks. And initially, the police had many raids. They had over 2,000 raids and arrested hundreds of people. And, you know, the French people were in a similar state, I guess, to Americans to an extent. After 9-11, many people cheered the uh, policies and initiatives of President George Bush, uh, TSA, uh, Patriot Act, you know, NSA spying, all these other things. And just after a few months of having similar measures in France, it's wearing a little thin. And if you think about the things we have here, uh, the things that happened after 9-11, and now these things are still in place, you still have... The, uh, the TSA patting you down at the airport. Initially, they were patting down a Muslim military-aged men, and now, since the videos have come out, them patting no, little uh, little schoolgirls, people have an issue with this. So you can't just wait until it comes to you, until the issue comes to you, because you see those anecdotes. They came for the, the Jews, they came for the whatever, they came for the whatever, and then they came to me, and there's nobody to fight by my side. So when you see this thing come to your door, say, hey, I understand um, there are threats out there, but you can't sacrifice your liberty for security. Back to you, Leanne. Here, when someone is making such a dire warning, but at the same exact time continuing to open the borders to people that the governments admit that they cannot vet, ISIS says we're going to be sending 500,000 of our fighters into Europe and just setting off these cells at any time to commit these acts of violence, keep people in a perpetual state of terror. So this is unprecedented here. Now you'll recall that uh, something similar to this was hastily put together um, the, the USA Patriot Act, which basically says you can search all buildings, private residences, there's preemptive arrest without probable cause, uh, any individual deemed by French authorities to be suspect or dangerous. And of course, we know from our own experience that this notion is dangerous. It's vague. It can potentially apply to anyone, especially political dissidents. And French citizens were all for this immediately following those terrorist attacks. They were saying, yes, please go ahead, implement this police state. But now they're having second thoughts about it as they're seeing their rights being stripped away. This is uh, Stefan Hughes and Alex Lantier. They say, as if in a slow motion coup d'etat, the ruling elite is moving to transform political life in France, creating an authoritarian regime. Under the state of emergency, public protests are banned. There is no guarantee of freedom of the press or freedom of assembly and no judicial oversight of arbitrary searches and seizures carried out by police. And we've already seen them banning protests. They're, they can't uh, have any freedom of assembly there. And so already changing the way of life. And in July of last year, one of the U.S. Army's top officers echoed this call that said that the, uh, the war against ISIS will last 10 to 20 years, probably longer. So the problem reaction solution, we're going to create this problem for you and we'll fix it for you with our permanent police state and our perpetual war, which will be everywhere. And so you're now starting to see them preparing the stage for whoever is going to be the next dictatorial president. Congress has been giving away their power, uh, even when uh, with this last election, Democrats were booted out of office. The Republicans that all went in gave the entire fiscal year for 2015 and 2016 over to the outgoing Democratic Party. So they've already been planning this, giving up their power. They don't even they don't want to deal with it. So it's pretty frightening. And then now this is coming out of uh, Sweden. Gangs of all male Moroccan migrant children are taking over train stations there. They're stealing, groping and beating women. Now, this is coming 
after the fact, we've already seen these integration guides and brochures um, aim, aimed at explaining how in Western European society, it's, you know, you don't really grope women, even if you think that they're wearing suggestive clothing, you shouldn't poop in the pool, things like that. Well, now, apparently, we have a lot of Moroccan street children who are taking over the, the train stations there. Uh, they're stealing, groping, beating women, and they're basically, they've got the police on their knees. They don't know how to deal with these little rapey Lord of the Flies gangs that they've got here in these tunnels. And... The, the, they say that the authorities uh, have, they're a huge problem for the authorities and they refuse any help from the Swedish authorities. So people have invited them all in and that they don't want help. They don't want to stay in the refugee centers. They don't want to stay with the families who are taking these people in. Um, they're, they're in the streets burglarizing, stealing stuff everywhere, according to the authorities, and slapping women when they protest being groped and raped. So there you go. There's one of the uh, little pamphlets of how not to touch women in the Western world. What is the norm here? But here's what I don't understand is this capitulation for this to people who are so racked with guilt that they capitulate and say, please, it's fine, grope us. Just please don't think that we are xenophobic. We actually have feminist women there in Cologne who are not concerned about protecting the safety of women there. They are actually apologizing by giving migrants roses following the mass molestation that took place on New Year's Eve. They went to the largest refugee center and handed out roses as a gesture against xenophobia. And, you know, this is just sort of a disturbing reminder of how the left responds to these attacks instead of demanding that migrants change their behavior, which has, of course, led to a rape epidemic sweeping uh, Europe. They're they're the ones that are now bowing down and apologizing. And also we've got Rome who is sparing the Iranian president any blushes by covering the nude statues there. So we have the Iranian president visiting there and just to avoid any possible offense on his visit to Rome, they've covered up these nude statues uh, at the museum there. So here we go. This is, this is just how the world is. We capitulate to extremists and they're prepping us for that here in the United States by Congress, giving all of its power away to whomever the next dictator will be. Now that the Bill of Rights have been largely destroyed by our corporatized government, President Obama has decided to go for the meat of the American Constitution. The War Powers of the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the United States Constitution, sometimes referred to as the War Powers Clause, vests in the Congress the power to declare war. This resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the United States Constitution. Let's be clear about that. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, a sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for almost any reason with absolutely no limitations. So while the East Coast was buried under record snowfall, Obama's faux Republican minions, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, scuttled another dangerous fast-track bill into the halls of the most hated Congress in U.S. history. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq War authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. It will allow this president and future presidents to wage war against ISIS without restrictions on time, geographic scope, or the use of ground troops. It is a completely open-ended authorization for the president to use the military as he wishes for as long as he or she wishes. Even President Obama has expressed concern over how willing Congress is to hand him unlimited power to wage war. The Foreign Relations Committee, whose chair, Senator Bob Corker, suggested that a new authorization for use of military force was unlikely to happen and that President Obama currently has the legal authority he needs. Corker's authority was bypassed by McConnell's treason.